the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is this is kind of like a, describing it as a preview of the new tool, so a preview of Simup Flood. We've played around with some Simup Flood ideas for a, a few years now, but very much focused within the small kind of catchment area. One of the things that came out of Storm Desmond and uh, kind of a call from Environment Agency was, uh, oh, DEFRA as well, uh, was around uh, looking at, well, how do we start to scale these things up to look at landscapes and uh, areas, you know, kind of thousands of kilometres squared. So that's what's why the small-scale sign-up needed kind of rethinking, and this is you know, the result of that kind of uh, rethinking of the approach. Generally speaking, from a, a flooding perspective, um, I, would, I would say Christmas 2014 was probably the turning point when natural flood risk management started to be very strongly accepted and the, the, the turn into going, actually, we need to look up catchment. After Storm Desmond, it had very much established that actually, we're not just going to try and mitigate at point of impact. We're going to have a balanced approach between landscape management, natural flood risk management kind of approaches, and uh, the, the hard engineering solution as well. And we need to get those two to work hand in hand. And this kind of uh, new approach uh, to hazard management is going to require new tools. And Simon Flood is aiming to be a rapid assessment to work out how to spatially target natural flood risk management across the landscape. So where do you want, where should you go and act? Where would be a, a good idea? So as I was saying, there's lots of different ways in which we can uh, reduce uh, flood risk from uh, an NFM perspective. You know, we've seen the River Eden soil aerator earlier. This kind of, you know, kind of storage ponds, uh, kind of woody debris downs, large one, larger ones and smaller ones, and kind of woodland planting, both kind of gill planting, uh, river ribble, and wet, wet woodland planting in the Eden. But it really comes down to this kind of normal sign-up question is, you know, we've got these tools, we've got these things we can do. Where in the landscape do we put them? And you can you know, start off saying, well, flooding, it's light diffuse pollution, it's rapid runoff. Yes, it is the same, but it is, there are some very significant differences why we can't just take the same approach. We can conceptualise it in the same way along the lines of the critical source area whereby if we've got a source of a problem and a pathway for it to connect through uh, to the point of impact, then we're going to get a problem. If we've got a large flood source being generated but disconnected from the river, we don't need to worry about it so much. Or if we've got a strong connection to the river but no source, we don't need to worry. It's where those two come together. So that's, that's part of it. The next part is uh, to do with, with timing and the synchronisation of different uh, subcatchments across the landscape. So it's where flood peaks and multiple catchments come together at the same time, which will give you rise to the far higher main flood peak. And the other thing is that uh, we can't really work off at one static rainfall pattern. So uh, if you look through an in like analysis of the history, a lot of floods will, be, will occur by similar circu uh, atmospheric circulation patterns. But the rainfall patterns exactly are going to be different. So there's no point trying to engineer a flood mitigation scheme for the River Eden based on the spatial pattern of Storm Desmond. Because the storm that's next going to the problem is going to have a different pattern. So we need to look at those different patterns as well. So the formulation um, of this is to kind of break it down into a generation risk and a connectivity risk. Generation looks at rapid runoff generation, rainfall patterns and the travel times, and the connectivity is based on the, the normal network index. And what we do for each rainfall pattern, for each uh, travel time map to each point of impact, we sum up all the different uh, risk values and merge those all together into to one map, uh, which I'll, I'll show in a second. So I've got an example application, which is uh, for the River Eden. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know it so well, I'll, I'll, there's a few places I'll be talking about. So Carlisle is, sits here at the bottom of the catchment. You have Penrith here, which, which doesn't sit on the main stem of the, the River Eden. You've got Appleby here, which uh, was flooded quite significantly. And that is on the main stem. And you've got uh, Kirby Stephen at the top here, which again is on the main, main stem. 
it's mainly a kind of a grassland and, and, and arable catchment. There's you know, kind of sandstone aquifers that sit underneath, but it's overlaid by kind of post-glacial till, uh, which means it has a very surface water-driven uh, response to, um, to storm events. And I've really kind of focused in, uh, in this application, as for the example, on three points of impact. What we want to be try and get to the point to manage it so we can reduce the flood risk in Carlisle without making it worse in Appleby and without making it worse at Kirby Stephen. Or, equally, improve it at Appleby and not make it worse for Carlisle. First thing that uh, looked at was the, um, the travel time distribution. So this is um, how long it takes uh, water to move from all the different parts of the landscape through, funnel, when it's funneled down and through that point of the town. So this is it for Appleby and this is it for Carlisle. So areas which are uh, in this highlighted area here, these kind of distances, you've got a lot of land where any runoff generated from those points are reaching Appleby at the same time, which will give rise to a flood peak. For Carlisle, due to the nature of the catchments, you've actually got a bimodal distribution. You've got two points coming through at the same time. If we look at this spatially, this is the uh, flood peak source areas uh, for Carlisle. So red is the areas which are most likely to contribute to the flood peak. And you can see you can actually get synchronization between this kind of Middle Eden catchment here and the, the northern part, part here, because the travel times from here and from here are about the same. So in terms of reducing your flood peak, what you want to be able to do is say, well, actually, these are the areas which are contributing to the flood peak. What I want to do, and a lot of the, the NFM measures are about slowing the flow, is to slow in these areas and move that water off the peak and into the few hours after to stretch the peak out and hence drop. We can say we can look at this for, for Carlisle. That's it, the same map in the same spatial extent for Appleby. So you've got a similar kind of pattern with a band which is contributing to the flood peak in Appleby. And again, uh, for uh, Kirby Stephen. Now, we can then start to, to realise with this is there's certain parts of the landscape which are very dangerous to be working in. So this area highlighted here, which is this band here on Appleby, if you slow flow here, it will have a benefit to Carlisle because it will move things off the main, main peak of the flood, but it will move the water from here back into the main part, so you'll make your flood, flood risk in Appleby worse by slowing the flow and, and synchronising the landscape together to make a larger flood peak at Appleby. So, so we want to avoid that. Next thing is around kind of rapid runoff generation. This is quite a quite, you know, standard sign-up kind of way of thinking. Is that, oh, actually, given uh, high-intensity rainfall, uh, how much of that is likely to be converted very rapidly from rainfall into sur surface flow. So taking land cover as being the key control and run-up potential, taking into the fact that implicitly within that is buried information on slope gradient and soil type with uh, land cover, certain land covers are preferring certain um, so, uh, slope gradients, for example. Roughly speaking, uh, so this was the, the weightings. Urban was given the highest weight due to the fact that it's impermeable surfaces, rapid connections, water can move off that part of the landscape quite quickly. You could run this by saying that uh, urban is, is low to look at more rural um, uh, approaches. I'm still working through exactly how, how to argue that one. And then you've got kind of similar weights uh, where kind of, you know, with... Uh, arable kind of drop down due to the poten uh, potential for surface sealing and hence kind of more rapid runoff. But these are kind of uh, weightings which we're, we're working through, which we're working through at the moment. The next part is around uh, the rainfall patterns. So what I did was I looked back through the the National River Flow Archive for five gauges across the River Eden and pulled out the dates of significant floods over about the last 20 to 30 years. Then took from the CEH uh, gridded estimates of aerial rainfall data set the daily spatial uh, patterns of rainfall for those days. 
and that's at a one kilometer uh, grid resolution. So you can see that this is just an example of, of nine of them. We had 15 um, in total. That actually you have quite different patterns in terms of the rainfall pattern, which is generating the flood event uh, for, for different flood events. Um, and as I said at the beginning, you know, it's, this is part of trying to capture that actually the next flood event is not going to be driven by the same rainfall pattern as we had before. Now, this kind of uh, way of working approach could, you know, you could extend, extend back. And if you could go through and make different land cover maps for different years, you could build that into it as well to look at the different combinations of that rainfall and that land cover map and integrate all of that together. This then goes in with the normal hydrological connectivity based on the network index. And you pull all of that together and this is what starts to, to come out. So the areas in red are the areas with higher SIMAP flood uh, risk scores. These are the areas you want to look at uh, earlier. You can see kind of urban areas kind of popping out in various places. And you can see a general kind of weighting towards the upper catchment due to the fact we've got point of impact here, here, and up here. So there's more weighting towards a mitigation action here, which can affect multiple ports, points of impact. What isn't in at the moment is waiting between those points of impact. You might want to wait Carlisle more than you wait Appleby based on number of properties potentially affected. It's one of the things that is, uh, is still to be, to be considered. If you kind of zoom in, you can kind of see how certain fields and certain land uses kind of pop out as being most important. You can also see the detail and the connectivity and other uh, features coming out into other parts of the landscape which can start to guide where you might undertake some actions. The final step of this is based on um, what got renamed uh, action clusters, kind of doing like a cluster analysis of those uh, points to find out actually where are there uh, lots of, where's areas where uh, one mitigation scheme, you know, it's like it's an extensive soloration kind of approach or a larger project where can it uh, tackle lots of uh, individual sources together? So it gives a way to kind of abstract out the quite complex data here into a more overview of you know, areas to, uh, to look at. So these, red, uh, so these blue areas are the areas where actually most actions could, be taken, could take place. So Simon Flood, you know, is aiming to be a tool to target uh, the placement of natural flood risk management schemes at the landscape scale, accounting for the different rainfall pa patterns, the travel times and synchronization of the different subcatchments, and multiple po points of impact. This is still being uh, developed and refined. We'd like to be able to kind of integrate this into like, the MySimeUp tool uh, as, as part of the approach. So that's kind of where we are with that. So kind of comments and critiques are, are welcome at this stage. Thank you.